stories of an aircraft builder. Scale RC Aircraft Magazine Number 12 Issue 3 of 93 In the first part Achim Engels reported on his entry into this one-to-one -one model and the wooden construction. This scale deals with the metalwork, the accessoires and the completion. It's particularly impressive that Achim, his girlfriend and friend, took on this project at the age of 17. It wasn't supposed to fly, but it will probably be the only Fokker triplane built according to the original. There are currently problems in that an original engine is being sought. The aircraft has been on display at the Technik Museum in Speyer since June 13th, 1992. We now got down to the first practical welds on the aircraft parts. If I remember correctly, the Koma radar was my first victim. Then we continued with the damping surface, the elevator and the ailerons. The work on the fuselage then became really interesting. It was already hard work fitting the individual tube parts to all the other previous parts, but the fuselage was to become even more complicated. The tubes do not run at right angles anywhere, which means that they have to be fitted at the right angle. To do this it was necessary to draw the fuselage sides on one to one scale on the large table top in my workshop and file the tubes to fit accordingly. The blisters on my hands were not uncommon but necessary for the development of corners. Now that all the tubes were probably filed the time had come. We set to work building the project on a scale of one to one, which had already been on my desk four years ago on a scale of one to six. The location had already been found, my friend Wolfgang's garage. What had to be built first of course was a jig. This is a scaffold in which the tubes are aligned in such a way that they have to be welded together. This frame also serves to prevent or at least contain distortion of the steel during heating and cooling. The time required to complete the tubular fuselage was not even particularly long. Within a week of vacation, working about 10 hours a day, I was able to finish the fuselage to such an extent that it could also be transported to the barn. Incidentally, this was also done on the roof of the car. Only the lifting of the fuselage onto the thrashing floor was somewhat more difficult due to its considerable weight compared to the wings. The fuselage could now be painted and then wrapped with strips of fabric in the places where the covering fabric would later have to be glued on. Then it was possible to start manufacturing the parts required for the rest of the construction, such as the controls, fairings, bracings and other small parts. These small parts were probably the most time consuming part of the entire aircraft build. Finally, it was time to cover and paint the aircraft. Once again, it was time to consult the clever books and practice the process on small wooden frames. But this problem was also solved and so the airplane stood disassembled with the lower and middle wings and fuselage covered in the same storage barn where the components had previously awaited their covering, with the only difference that we now had to take up residence downstairs. The Fokker V5 seems to inspire many people, so it is not surprising that a lot has already been written about it. It is therefore not surprising too that it is becoming increasingly popular in the home build scene. However, it seems necessary to mention that all these replicas have nothing in common with the Fokker D01 of 1917 except, perhaps, their rough appearance. It's the same as with the publications about it. The available plan sets for this aircraft were not created according to historical study but purely commercial and constructional aspects. The buyers and builders are often not uh, even aware of this and are of the opinion that they own a Fokker D01 that is true to the original. But back to the literature. Most of it is more or less copied from previous publications. 
And since these publications were written in a familiar way, everything is quite distorted. There are only a few real historians in this field who actually know what they are talking about. Unfortunately, these few are mostly concerned with the historical circumstances and not with the construction of the airplane. However, none of this would be of any interest if these aircraft were only used for private building pleasure and flying. Unfortunately, this is not the case. Such inauthentic aircraft replicas are also exhibited in museums and thus contribute to the falsification of history. We have set ourselves the task of reconstructing the structure of mainly German aircraft from the First World War, of which no originals exist, and rebuilding them for museums and similar institutions. At this point I would like to tell you something about our work. We concentrate on a few specific types of aircraft and collect all the documents that still exist about them. These are then evaluated together with historians and new old plans, sketches and sample parts are produced. Using these documents we are able to build what we would like to call a first attempt. Such a first attempt follows a precise analysis of the aircraft structure and the shape of each individual part. The results are then published in an American journal called World War One Aero and all those who think they know something about the aircraft are invited to comment. Any detail that can be proven to be wrong will then be changed in the drawings and the second project will then hopefully be 100% correct. This is our goal and any kind of help is welcome. Our aircraft should not only be built true to the original but also correspond to the processing methods and materials. Of course our Fogarty R1, which is the example of here, built with our hands and our arms because we lacked the necessary machines. We also had to make a few compromises in the choice of materials. For example, lead manning, which was used to prime steel pipes before applying paint, is prohibited today. The chemical composition of the paints is also no longer the same as that used at the time, but wherever possible we will use original materials. For the covering, for example, we use the fabric that is distributed in America by the company Vintage Aero and its production corresponds to the standards of the time. The Imperial War Museum in England uses the same material to restore its aircraft. We also did not allow ourselves to compromise on the paint. We gave the aircraft the paint job of the aircraft with a military number 15217. This is one of the four aircraft of this type flown by Baron von Richthofen. The Fokker triplanes left the Fokker factories at the time in a streaky camouflage paint scheme, which was then provided with the personal markings, or have even been completely painted over by some pilots in the field. 15217 was partly painted red by von Richthofen and still showed its camouflage paint scheme in most places. Of course, in order to remain true to the original, we first camouflaged the entire machine and only then painted the corresponding areas red. The application of the camouflage paint also corresponds to the methods used at the time, and all markings correspond to the original in size and arrangement. All this, as well as all other details, can be proven historically. In the meantime, the aircraft is in the museum in Speyer. An original engine is still being sought. One more word at the end. We do not want to claim that our triplane is 100% correctly built. I would like to mention two cross deviations from the original and give the reasons for each. First, the tires of our replica are profiled. At that time, we were lucky enough to find a pair of wheels that corresponded to the original in shape, size and number of spokes. Unfortunately, the treaded tires were fitted. Second, the sheet metal cover on the underside of the fuselage behind the engine had a maintenance cover, a maintenance hatch on the original. Since we don't know exactly how it was constructed, we temporarily mounted a closed sheet metal. Nevertheless, the aircraft represents the basis for discussion and I am also prepared, depending on the response to this article, 
to write an article about the technical structure of this and later perhaps also other aircraft. Such an article would describe the structure and functioning of the respective aircraft in detail. I would like to take this opportunity to ask you, dear reader, for support. Perhaps you have documents about German World War I aircraft, like drawings, texts or pictures. No matter how inconspicuous it may be, it could help us. Thank you.